Hi, this is David from over at Simply Maya. Now, I left off the last course when we used some basic poly modeling techniques in Maya to model this knife here. And in this one, I want to look at some basic UVing of this object. Now, in case you skip through the last tutorial, you're going to want to delete the history off this guy. So edit, delete by type, history. And you're going to want to freeze its transformations, which I've already done. But if you haven't, you can go up to modify and freeze transforms. If you watched our tutorial on creating a custom shelf, these are also here for you. Now, if you don't do that beforehand, it can cause some slight weirdness in the UV editor, especially with Maya's unfold function. So make sure you get that step. Then we're going to come up here. We're going to change our workspace to UV editing. And we're going to take a look at what Maya has given us by default. And yep, these are not equidistant, equally spaced squares. So this default UV that we've had on here, we've obviously moved the UVs around along with the vertex and everything else. So it's become uh, unworkable, basically. So in order for us to start from scratch, I'm just going to completely delete the UV off this. So delete UV, and then we're going to need to assign some form of UV. Now, we modeled this from a plane from a top down view. So I'm going to use a plane you like UV map to start with. So I'm going to come to UV and go for best plane. Now, you have to have the object selected for that, of course. Best plane, select a face that represents the plane we worked on, in this case, the top. And I'm going to hit OK. And you should see, or enter in this case, I'll turn this texture view off. You should see that that's just created a UV map that's the top of this object. Now, if you turn on the texture view, it's going to look pretty good. In fact, it's going to look pretty flat indeed. And you might go, hurrah, you are done. But if you watched our principles of UV mapping, you will know that we only have one um, angle of this object represented. So if I was to take this into Photoshop now and draw on it or into Substance or Mari, uh, everything I painted on this side would appear on this side too. Now that can actually be advantageous if you're trying to save space in your UV maps and you want to paint a wood grain texture and it's the same on both sides. Hmm, that's a lot of the time that can be okay, especially if you're working with a restricted UV set. Now, it's not good though. Because if we look at the sides, you'll just see straight lines because there's no representation of the sides of the object on this UV. So we do need to do a bit of work here. I would love to say that's it. Good night. Thank you very much. Um, but unfortunately, we can't. So when it comes to UV mapping, there's several ways to lay out a UV depending on what you're going to do with it. Now, I'm going to lay mine out for ease of painting, which means every time I would be painting a different material, I'm going to make that its own UV shell so it's easy for me to paint. So, for instance, where this wood hits this handle, or it can be black plastic if you're doing a sort of a tactical knife, I guess I'm going to make mine out of wood. But where it meets this cross guard here, which might be brass or stainless steel or whatever, and where it meets the hilt, these are different materials. And this makes it an excellent place to cut a seam. So I'm going to cut one seam here and one around here. Now we have a pole here, which is why it won't cut the edge loop. So we've got one, two, three, four, five uh, edges connected to one vertex, which is OK. It's just going to stop you selecting the edge loop all in one go. So I'm going to select the edge loop around there and I've selected the one around here. I'm going to go under my UV tools, under cut and sew. I'm going to hit cut. And this will cut out our UV shell. So if I select said UV shell, I can now move it out here. The problem is we still can't get it flat because it needs a seam in which to un unwrap and fold flat. Uh, so we need to pick a location for the seam. Now I would put a seam where there would naturally be some stretching. So on a corner, a lot of the time there's some stretching and some roughness there, or maybe some wear. And which corner? Well, that depends. If you had this guy in like, uh, I don't know, if you were modeling for, let's say, an FPS game and you never saw the bottom of the handle, then the bottom of the handle would be a good place to put a seam. So you want to get your seams between natural joins in materials, like the difference between this wood and this brass, or you want to get them in a location where they're not going to be so visible. And we're going to cut there. Now we should have three white lines on this. Cut all the way around here, cut all the way around here, and cut all the way around here. Now we select the UV shell in the UV view and we just need to unfold it. 
So unfold. And there you go. That's unfolded it. Now the long edge should be along here. Let's check it's unfolded it in the right direction. And it has. That's the representation of the long edge here. And indeed the long edge on the other side. So those are actually joined together. If you folded this up into a cylinder, it would represent this. Now this should be pretty flat. And if we look at the sides, you can see they're nice and flat. Now there is a UV distortion view in Maya in the later versions of Maya, if we turn it on. And you can see where we've gone around the bends here, we are a little bit distorted. But if I turn off the smooth preview, you'll see we're actually not. So when we're smoothing, we're creating a little bit of distortion, but it's well within the bounds of what would be normal for this type of material. So that seems okay. So there's the handle done. Now, oops, a tip for you. Don't drag the UVs. I've done it again. Like, there we go. Done. I'm just going to put it up there for the moment. We'll come back to UV placement and everything else in a little minute. So a small tip for you, if you're new to UVing and you're finding this all quite difficult to visualize laying flat, one of the things I've found that's helped people is if you select the UV shell, the one you've laid out already, and hit Control and H, it will hide it. And then you will be able to see just what you have left to UV, but also it will leave the holes in these other objects, which can make them a little bit easier to understand what needs to be cut to lay it flat. So let's turn off the distortion view for now. And let's come in here and think about how we'd lay this flat. Well, if we don't mind so many seams, and I do not, because this will be a brass material, so the seams will be fairly hidden. I am going to cut down here, down here, down here down here and then down here. So that all looks pretty good. This one would need to actually cut back all the way here and I'm just gonna hit cut. And then I am going to unfold this guy. So unfold and there we are. Now, if we put the checker on it, uh, which has just been hidden from view, there we are. You should see that it's pretty square. Now there's a little bit of distortion on it, but nothing I would worry about too much. So that's also been laid out square. Now you will see there'll be edges that this, of course, and this have in common. So we could actually stitch these back together a little bit. If I take this edge here, you should see it appear over here. So let me zoom out a little bit. In fact, make that bigger for you altogether. Turn off the checker. So this edge is where it connects to the handle. So we could actually take this edge, this edge, this one, this one, this one, and this one, and hit sew together, or stitch together in this case. This gives me one less edge to worry about. So now I have UV shell. Why did that, why is that not one shell? Hang on just a second. Maya's playing uh, funny games with me. Ah, it is one shell. It's just this one is hidden, so I can't select it in the viewport. But this would allow me to stitch this one and this one together, which gives me one less seam, but also keeps this as one object. Now, maybe you don't want that because you're dealing with different materials. Maybe you wouldn't want to do that, but you can do it is the point. So actually thinking about it, I probably wouldn't want those together. I would rather have the seam than have those together. But if you needed them together, of course you can do. So if you're really trying to minimize your seams, you can join things together. You can also join things together like that in this case for organization. Maybe you want to keep everything as one UV. Now, Let's go along and control H and hide that guy because we've done him now. So let's get him out of the viewport so he's not in there confusing us. And let's do the same with this guy. So this is going to be a relatively simple operation. Edge around here, edge around here. And we'll keep going edge, edge. Just make sure you select the whole edge loop. Uh -huh. Unlike me, let's press Q for selection tool. Maya's being a bit picky with its edge selection, so nothing new for Maya 2020 there. And that's gone the whole edge loop. Let's go to cut, and now we should be able to go to um, 
let's see uv uv shell of course and zoom in on that and we won't be able to unlay it or well, i won't be able to unfold it yet because it will still be attached so we'll need to also cut here and here and yeah what is the best way to unfold this guy probably gonna do it along here along here along here the uving is always a battle between the number of seams you have and the amount of stretching and pinching you have it's always that battle there is no way to get it with no stretching and uh, no seams or you know it's just not possible so you're going to have to come in and make the right determination for you i'm going to go to uv shell and i'm going to unfold that and there you go it's nice and unfolded let's just move it up here the bit that you see the hole that you see here is correspondent to the hole that you would see here so if i throw on a checker texture just to check it you'll see that it's square I mean, they're in, in diamonds at the moment but they're still pretty square okay and if you want to get a look at smaller squares of course you can scale that up in this view so you can see there's some slight distortion and again you're going to have to either cut more seams for that unfold it relax it you know but this for me is fine i'm not going for a absolutely perfect uv with this uh it's not necessary in this case so that's square enough for me that will hold the texture well enough so i'm going to come in Control h and hide this and this leaves us with one part which is the blade so let's think about this so the back of the blade is straight so it can remain connected to each other so i am going to just chop it around here and i'm going to turn this view off so we can have a better look okay i can't actually chop it down the center there so i'm going to have to get this teeny edge and this one and then we're going to chop all the way around the blade to the end and let me get in there find out what's going on that one will be fine i think and here and cut and uv uv shell and unfold and that should give us both halves of our knife there so this would be the knife blade this is the hilt and we can actually select the object now we've uv'd everything and push shift h and bring it all back now we have to figure out where we want to organize it now all of these white lines are seams so again depending on your use case um, you might want your seams in different locations there are many ways as they say to skin this particular cat so let's get everything the same size for a start let's select all four uv shells and go to where do we want arrange and layout and just hit layout okay and that will make everything a similar scale so if we put the checker on you can see that all those squares are nice and the same scale let's smooth it and see if that uh, causes us any issues uh, certainly nothing that i can't live with so that's realistically a, a basic uv for this type of object you can go ahead and do a texture for this thing now now how we've got our uv laid out um, I'm not particularly happy with the layout of this we can change it now you'll see here we're in a UV space called U1 V1 or 1001 now this is a UDIM a UV patch a UV tile call it what you will each one of these can hold a texture so the greater the scaling of these is these uh, shells the more you maximize the area for this the more texture you can paint so for instance if we say this is a 4k image 4k by 4k and you have half of it empty you only have 2k's worth of pe pixels now long gone are the days when we would you know struggle to fill completely this box to maximize our texture space 
And this is because we have UDIMs now. We have texture programs capable of painting multiple boxes or multiple UD UDIMs at the same time. So what I would like to do is take all my metallic objects and throw them in the next UDIM over. So U2, V1 or 1002. Now the 1001 is uh, a 1002 is Mari notation, I believe, but it really doesn't matter. All you need to know is you can utilize these boxes. So from a layout perspective and an ease of painting perspective, I would have uh, sort of all my metallic textures in one, maybe. And I'm going to scale these to make use of the appropriate space. So this one would be in here. And this one would be in here. Okay, and again, I'm going to scale both of these to make use of the available space. So if you like, the more space I take up in here, the higher resolution I can paint my texture here. Now, of course, if you wanted your stainless steel in this one, your brass in this one, your wood in this one, you could do that too. Uh, for me, however, if I do 2K texture maps on this, this will give me you know plenty of space to paint and you can you're not limited to 2k you could have you know 8k even if you wanted to so and each one of these maps could be a uh, displacement map a texture a box standard base color map a reflection map uh, whatever you like so each one of these is capable of containing more textures than just one it's just this is where you would paint your texture so let's have a look at our checker box. That won't have changed every, anything. You can just see that our handle is in 1001. And if we can find it on the blade, yeah, 1002 on the blade there. Okay, so that's how you can patch out your model. That's a nice square UV map on this. Nicely organized, easy to paint. Uh, even in Photoshop, it would be easy to paint, especially easy to do in Mari or Substance Painter. So I hope this has given something uh, of interest to you. Um, I know the world's a little nuts right now, so I hope you're all staying safe. And I really hope this has given you something to you know, uh, focus on, maybe something that's given you a little bit of enjoyment. So thanks for watching, and I shall see you in the next one.